Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about a uh, refrigeration cycle. Particularly, I'm going to focus on vapor compression refrigeration cycle today. And today is the last lecture of uh, the spring semester. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the thermodynamics so far. And uh, please you know, pay attention to this last lecture. Please read the chapter 11.1 through 4 to understand better about this vapor compression refrigeration cycle. And also, I really hope you can answer those two questions. Uh, the first question is, how can we configure the refrigeration and heat pump cycles? And can you conduct the thermodynamic analysis of the vapor compression cycle? Now, before we talk about this refrigeration cycle, I'm going to review what we learned in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we talked about the expansion of Rankine cycle, particularly you know, we quite questioned how can we improve the net power output and the thermal efficiency of the ranking cycle. So in order to increase the net power, we could lower the condensing pressure. And also, we could also increase the steam generating pressure. Also, we can use the reheating. By doing all these kind of possible approaches, we can expand the area of the ranking cycle surrounded by four processes. Then how can you improve the thermal efficiency? In order to improve the thermal efficiency, we could use regeneration by using a feed water heater. So many times in realistic steam power plant, we use several feed water heaters to preheat the water before it goes to a boiler. Then we can save certain fuel or uh, the energy that we have to input to the boiler or steam generator. And by this amount, we could improve the thermal efficiency. These days, as a uh, you know contemporary uh, power plant you know concept, we many times use combined cycle, which combines the gas power cycles and steam uh, ranking cycle. Or we also can use cogeneration concept, which combines the power generation and heat generation to benefit most out of you know, uh, the steam generation is used for power generation and certain uh, use for of the heat. So far, we have focused on heat engines. So depending on, you know, uh, what kind of working fluids we use, either by using gas or by using vapor, we talked about gas power cycles and also vapor power cycles. But all of them are based on, you know, a heat engine concept. Okay. So what it means is, okay, we get certain heat from hot reservoir to the cycle. And this cycle can do certain network out. And, and after we do certain work, the remaining heat should be rejected to a cold reservoir. So that is schematic diagram of you know, general heat engines that we can understand. So always we have the most amount of heat input from the hot reservoir and part of it is being used as a work and part of it is being wasted as a heat rejection. Now, what you have to ask is that in general, can you really reverse this heat engine to make use of kind of almost same kind concept of cycle for something else. So, so what, in, what I mean by reversing the heat engine is like that. Can you really take out certain heat from the cold reservoir to a cycle? And by inputting certain amount of work, not generating a work, but by consuming the work by that uh, cycle, then can we get the amount of heat rejected to hot reservoir. Okay. So what is the benefit of reversing this type of heat engine? If we focus on you know, cooling the space, then we always can you know, take a certain heat away from that space to make it cool. Okay. Or if we focus on a warm reservoir or hot reservoir, by putting certain amount of heat, QH in the case to that reservoir, we can make this space keep warmed, okay? But in return, 
instead of generating a work, we have to consume the work to reverse the cycle. So that kind of concept has been um, you know, developed to uh, make a new uh, devices such as air conditioner or refrigerator or heat pump and sort of uh, thing. We already learned about uh, you know, that kind of reversing of heat engine to use that reverse to uh, something uh, special like a refrigeration or heat pump. Okay? And all we discussed can be found from uh, lecture note 22. Okay, uh, let me repeat it again. The, in a heat engine, the purpose is to produce a network by applying heat. Okay, so that we can draw the schematic diagram like that. So we get certain heat from the hot reservoir to the cycle. And from that energy, we can generate certain amount of work out. And the remaining portion should be rejected to cold uh, temperature reservoir, you know, to run the cycle. Okay. And in order to measure how efficient that cycle runs, we define the thermal efficiency. For refrigeration, now we try to reverse this entire you know, heat engine processes. So we can take out a certain amount of heat from cold reservoir to the cycle, and by uh, consuming certain amount of work or by inputting that amount of work, then we can dump certain heat to the warm reservoir. In that case, our focus is not, you know, in the, you know, how much work we can generate, but how much heat we can take away from the cold space to refrigerate, to make a refrigerator, uh, you know, to make it cool. And in order to measure the efficient use of the cycle, we define the coefficient of performance, which is defined as the amount of heat that is taken out from the cold space divided by the net amount of work that we have to invest to this cycle. Exactly the same cycle can be used uh, to the different field of area if we focus on the warm heated space. So the purpose of and that kind of cycle, that kind of device is called as a heat pump. And the purpose of a heat pump is to supply heat into warm medium by applying the work. Okay. Everything remains the same as refrigeration. But instead of focusing on taking out, uh, taking heat out of the cold environment, but we want to dump certain heat to the space to be warmed. Okay, so in that case, that could be your house if you need a certain heat. The measure of uh, evaluating the efficient use of that kind of heat pump concept uh, is defined basically based on the coefficient of performance for heat pump. So that is what we learned in the uh, lecture note 22. So now let's narrow down the specific type of a cycle that we can make use of for uh, refrigeration or heat pump. And the idea is vapor uh, starting from the vapor power cycle. Okay. So let's think about you know how we learned about the vapor power cycle. So in the case, ranking cycle. So in order to run the ranking cycle, we need four components. One is a pump and boiler and steam turbine and a condenser. And we could draw the TS diagram right, uh, like this. Okay. Again, now our uh, question then is, can you really reverse this vapor power cycle? Okay. So in order to reverse the vapor power cycle, all components should be reversed as well. So condenser should be replaced by the evaporator. Okay? And turbine or certain device that expands should be replaced by the compressor. Okay? And a boiler, which is quite you know, a kind type of heat exchanger that, uh, that gets heat to the cycle, should be replaced by another uh, heat exchanger that should reject heat to the outside. And pump can be replaced by something that, that expands the working fluid. Okay. 